Hey, what is going on YouTube? You're here from MJ Tech. Today we are checking out another electric scooter. And if you guys have noticed here from my channel, I've been focusing on a lot of these scooters and it is because of one simple reason. They are fun. For a long time, they've been out, I believe since 2017, they started coming a little bit faster than usual. Normally, we had brands that only offer about 15, 20 miles an hour. And now we have scooters that go even 90 miles an hour. Uh, this one here is definitely a budget scooter, but for the price, I think you guys are getting a very nice deal. This is called the Evercross H5, also known as the HB24. This unit has a motor of 100 watts, 48 volts. The battery is a 10 amp hour lithium ion with 48 volts and it has a maximum speed of 28 miles per hour. Some people have gone a little bit faster on it and in kilometers that'll be about 45 kilometers approximately. It has a max range of about 25 miles but I usually like to deduct at least 6-7 miles from that. So I'll be happy if I can get 18, 20 miles, that'll be perfect. Also this thing has a maximum low capacity of 440 pounds, which is 200 kilograms. That's amazing in my opinion. The scooter only weighs about 52 pounds or 23.6 kilograms and it has 10 inch road tires already. This is not an off-road scooter. It comes with a seat. The charging time is about four to seven hours approximately and it comes with LED lights on the front and we also get brake lights on the back. It has mechanical brakes. It comes with shocks on the front and back and it has an LED display with a key. So here guys, without further ado, let's jump into the unboxing and see what we get inside of this big box. All right guys, so here we go. We got my little handy dandy knife and I held all my temptations to get this open. I decided to leave it here for the video. And this scooter has been out, I believe, since early 2021. And again, it has a lot of popularity out there just because of the fact that the price is really unbeatable. I mean, like I said before, 680 and you're getting about 28 miles an hour. And I'm pretty sure that it is also uh, restricted a little bit. We can probably make it even a little bit faster. And here we have a picture of the product. Evercross electric scooter. It seems a little bit generic to me. And here we have the design of this particular scooter. Super duper exciting. Let's go ahead and open the official lid. So far the package doesn't seem like it came damaged from, I believe this one came from UPS. Okay. And this is how everything comes packed inside as you guys can observe there's a whole bunch of foam in here we get uh, i can tell this is obviously the charger right here set it aside we get the manuals it came with some tools uh, for maintenance and it came with an extra bolt right there that's quite interesting i wonder what that's for uh, then we get here the foam and i can already see the back end of the scooter check this out guys this is quite exciting i get like a little kit with these scooters and these tires they look smaller check out my hand they look smaller on videos than they do in real person that's what happened to me with the yumi x11 it was the same story uh, so here we have apparently the seat I set that aside and here comes the scooter that's pretty much all we get inside of the box. Let's go ahead and remove this plastic that it came in. Now I can tell comparing it to the Yumi, which was my high-end scooter, is that this one is a lot lighter. And that could be a good thing sometimes, especially when loading it into your car. Having a heavy scooter, let me tell you guys, it takes a toll on your back. So let me find here my knife it's right here let's go ahead and cut these things loose being careful not to damage the scooter and you get more stuff i can see the handles are foldable and you don't have to unbolt anything it seems like it is quite comfortable we here we have what appear to be 
uh, let's see here, a light. Then we get here another foam material. There we go. And this is the folding mechanism right there. And so let's see if we can take this out. And the way you do it is by pressing in this little red tab. You press it in like so, and then we stretch it out until we hear that click. Now, I believe there's like a little pin in which you had to place it here by the little red tab. I'm not sure if you guys are seeing that right here, but this little lever is. You had to put in this pin so that it doesn't fold in, and of course, it'll make it a lot more secure. I always suggest that when you have something like a bike, scooter, whatever it is that has wheels on it, check the bolts. It is very important. Uh, this particular scooter, all we really have to do is just install here the uh, front light, which is a Allen size number five. Luckily for me, I have a couple of uh, tools laying around. So all we do is remove this bolt for the front light. I believe it is also your horn. So keep that in mind. It is very important that you guys get this set up properly. And a whole bunch of stuff came out. That's okay. And now we position the light like so. And then we reattach all the screws, everything the way it came. Okay, once everything is leveled and positioned properly, you can go ahead and tighten this Phillip screw on the side. So we have here the mechanical brakes with this brakes on the front we get the suspension here as well so far this is a full feature scooter it has a little bit of everything on the back here we have the fender it clearly tells you right here not to stand on it we get the rear mechanical brake and the disc uh, or the rotor right here and check this out we have the seat already pre-installed on here it is super simple to get it uh, put together so all you do is lift here on the post now there's like a little pin here on the side you simply press in that pin and then you push it back and then we have this tensioner on the side you put it on top of it and make it tight and now the post is super solid on here and now for the seat, all you do is grab it and unfold it. There's a little lever here on the back side. If you lift it, you can fold it again, like so. Really easy to do. And now you make sure that this tensioner is loose right here. And you insert the post, the seat post into the base. And then you tighten it up. Sometimes you have to adjust it a little bit so that it goes nice and firm there we go and we have the seat all set up and ready to go now this seat also has a suspension here so when you hit uh, potholes whatever it will give you that suspension feel which is really nice and the seat is nice and wide uh, for those like me who have a big Botox then this will help quite dramatically the Evercross H5 here has a deck width of about eight inches and a half approximately so that should give you enough room to place both of your feet side by side and you don't have to be riding with one foot in the front one foot in the back like with other brands out there that I've seen before to unfold the handlebars it is super easy you simply stretch it and then you have this mechanism which will automatically go inward and it's actually quite nice and steady on there it doesn't wiggle at all and to unfold it you simply follow what the arrow is telling you right here so you move it towards where the arrow is pointing it could be a little bit tough there we go and that's how you unfold it so let's go ahead and unfold both of them and there we go and now we can increase the height of your handlebars by losing up here the stem tensioner you simply lift it up like so and then retension the stem 
the nice space in place and that's it Alrighty guys, so here we have the final product fully assembled. On the top here we have the main controllers. We get here the accelerator. Uh, then on the left hand side we get the power key here for the headlight. We get the turn signals as well as the horn. So to get it started you flick the key. You hold and press here the power key. And I have already into miles to change the settings, the P settings. You simply hold and press uh, these two buttons and uh, that'll take you to the P settings. I might leave that for a separate video, but yes, I change it from miles, I'm sorry, to, from kilometers to miles, and everything's working great so far. Uh, so again, here we have the headlight, and so far it seems like it's quite bright. Also, this headlight uh, provides the horn for it as well. So the horn is right here, it's a little bit funny. That's the horn, and then we get the turn signals. This is the right turn signal. And then we get the left side turn signal. And finally, if you hold and press here, the mode button, it turns on the lights on the side of the scooter. Check that out. I believe there's a hack where if you remove this plastic, there's a button inside for the LED light strip where you can change the modes and it has a whole bunch of them. So I plan to do that as well. So now that we got everything here squared away, the last thing I will do to the scooter is again, check all the bolts, make sure everything is nice and tight. I might use the seat for a little bit, then I will switch to standing mode and give you guys my personal opinion about this scooter. So far, it seems like it's very promising for the price. Five minutes later. Alrighty guys, so here we have now the Evercross all set up and ready to go as i mentioned earlier i'm not a fan of the seat i know a lot of people will be it is just a matter of preference i gotta say this thing writes great a lot of people have also complained that sometimes it feels a little unstable the issue is that where the suspension connects to the frame there's a bolt that needs to be greased or you need to add oil in my case i added oil and now the steering is really nice and smooth and it's giving me a lot more stability i am not getting the speed wobbles right now you're doing about 90 miles an hour approximately actually 70 miles an hour and it feels great for the battery range, I will have to test that on a separate video. Uh, so far, I've done about five miles approximately, and I can see all the bars on here. So I'm assuming that the battery does last as long as they are claiming, which is about 25 miles. But sometimes uh, these, uh, battery indicators they don't give you the correct battery amount and sometimes you think you have a lot of battery and before you know it it goes down to 50 in a short while it goes down to zero so just be careful I will say if the range they're saying is 25 miles that's on gear one which is the slowest uh, speed mode and you have to be very skinny as well remember these can hold up to 440 pounds myself I'm about 225 pounds and it is doing a great job with the seat it felt nice and stable but I also felt like I was low riding I think it's because the suspension even if you have it on the maximum height with the suspension, it goes down a little bit too low. So for that reason, I decided to, to take it off and I prefer to be standing. Maybe because my first scooter, which was the Yumi X11, I was always standing around. I kind of got used to it. I gotta say guys, this thing is definitely underrated in many different ways. This scooter 
feels amazing. So far, the brakes have been working great for me. I'm not getting any issues. I did notice a little bit of a scratching sound at the beginning when I first got it. But then with the use, it went away by itself. So now it is super quiet. I think I heard more things rattling on the Yumi X11 than I do with this particular scooter. Everything is very nice and tight on here. Also, when I checked the bolts, they were all nice and tight already. And they come with the blue Loctite. Also, uh, with this scooter, you get uh, cruise control. If you go into the P settings by pressing the mode and power key, you go into P16 and you change it to number one. You only have two options. You can do zero or one. And if you stay at 10 miles an hour, it'll cruise control for you. So that's another great feature that we have here with this particular scooter. Like I said, guys, it is a full featured scooter that will do the job quite well for you. As for the suspension, I would recommend not doing off-roading with this particular scooter or getting into heavy bumps or potholes. It is not designed for that, guys. This is designed for places like the one I'm riding right now that you guys are viewing here, for nice, smooth terrain. Do not go on rough surfaces. Otherwise, it's gonna feel a little rough. The lights on it at nighttime, they do the job okay. They're not super bright. And they will only illuminate in a, in a short distance, meaning that they don't go too far when illuminating. If you guys are looking for something to begin with, something affordable, something that is well built for the most part, this is definitely it. Only $680 and I'm telling you this thing is solid in every single aspect. My only complaint about it is the suspension. It is definitely not the best and maybe the mechanical brakes a little bit. But if you know how to tweak things around and you are mechanically inclined, this scooter is definitely for you. So this is after approximately six miles total. I still have the full battery, but I don't have any lights turned on. So the battery, I would say does last close to 20 miles depending on your terrain if you're on a level surface or if you're doing um, hills and of course like I said before your weight so so far I'm 225 pounds and it's holding quite well but I live in Florida so we have flat land great little scooter let me know what you guys think down below. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, comment, and share. Click on the bell icon, and I'll see you on my next one.